Today we're going to be talking about a little film nobody's heard of called Gladiator 2. The big thing is that Russell Crowe is not in it. There's some new chap in it uh, called Paul. Is he any good? Is he a worthy successor? Find out after the bit. Let's get real. As powerful emperors run Rome down to the ground, a young, passionately determined fighter turned slave is given the chance to fight for his freedom in the dreaded gladiatorial pit. But is this complicated warrior more than he seems? I didn't love Gladiator the first time I saw it. I can't lie. Save for Joaquin Phoenix's fantastic performance, I kind of found it overrated to be H. This on some level had to do with comparing it to that other seminal epic that came out just years prior. The Mel Gibson starring and directed Braveheart. It also has to do with the fact that, as good as it may be, Ridley Scott's directing style has never quite been my bag. There's no real knocking Scott and what he's accomplished. He's the only living director who could have dealt with those old school epics. I'm thinking Spartacus, El Cid and the Ten Commandments. And the guy, let's face it, has had an enviable career. That said, I gotta say, I preferred his brother Tony. I also gotta say that I liked Gladiator far more the second time out and over 20 years later. I found the story of quiet stoicism, honour and betrayal far more stirring the second time around, in no small part due to the perfect casting of Russell Crowe as the exceptionally well-named Maximus Decimus Meridius. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Crowe was the other part of the equation that I initially missed alongside Phoenix. All seething masculinity living alongside a sort of sadness and genuine sensitivity. So perhaps the biggest task would be filling the shoes of two exceptional leads who really did lead the first film to glory. And so, who'd they get this time? and how'd they do? Enter Gen Zia and short shorts wearer Paul Meskel. For full disclosure, I'd heard Meskel's name for some time now, but had never quite seen him in anything. For me, in a nutshell, Meskel's performance is that of two halves. On one hand, I see what features put him in such a prestigious and coveted spot so early on in his career. He has a very manly face in the vein of a young Richard Burton or Marlon Brando. And there's no denying he has that somewhat indelible cinematic quality. His close-ups in particular make me go, oh wow, the camera really loves this guy. That said, I don't think that Meskel's performance was quite the slam dunk that many had claimed, in as much as his weaknesses are equal, at least, to his strengths. Where Russell Crowe found the perfect balance of sensitivity and blunt force trauma. Meskel is like a poet who's never set foot on a battleground, who's asked to suddenly go to war. I just didn't in a nutshell believe the moments where he was fighting. It wasn't so much that he can't fight, but the film positions Meskel as a leader, as well as the bravest and the baddest. You know, the guy who takes on and wins every fight. And Meskel seems more like a guy who spent the majority of his time treading boards and learning lights, which he has. But the fact that it shows is a problem. Some guys possess what seems at least like a natural physicality for the screen. Think Sean Connery in Doctor No, or cast your mind back to the physical dexterity of Harrison Ford as Han Solo in A New Hope, or Wesley in Passenger 57, always bit on black. Some guys you just believe can deck a man, but Meskel currently doesn't appear to be that guy. And what of the antagonist? Who could they possibly find to fill the shoes of such an amazing actor? such as Joaquin Phoenix. Hmm. Enter little-known whippersnapper called Washington, Denzel Washington. In the absence of Crow and Phoenix, Washington was the clout this film needed from an audience perspective to give it credibility, in name at least. Denzel is by all accounts one of the greatest actors screen has ever seen. And here he is yet again one of the greatest actors you or screen has ever seen. And to go into why it might ruin the fun, Washington plays a slave trader as well as fixer and gambler who may or may not have an oversized agenda and whose path eventually crosses with Paul Meskel's Lucius. But rest assured, this is Denzel's domain, Denzel's Colosseum, Denzel's picture. And everybody else in this film is living in it rent-free. 
The film itself is a decent continuation of the original. It looks and feels incredibly similar to the original in both good ways and bad. Those big crowd scenes for one seem just as CGI as they did in the original. The fight scenes are much the same too. They're well mounted but there's something about the way Sir Rid does it that leaves me just a little bit detached if not cold. It was one of the massive reasons I preferred Braveheart to the original Gladiator. That film placed you inside the action and was a rush to every single sense. You felt the emotion, the passion and the sheer bloody madness of war. It was a jolt to every single sense. I also wasn't a fan of those big MGM pictures to which Sir Rid seems influenced by for much the same reasons. They felt extravagant and Hollywoody, but often vacuous and artificial. Everything felt like one humongous soundstage as opposed to feeling authentic, grounded and real. But you know, there are levels to these things and Sir Rid doesn't not know what he's doing, clearly. Pedro Pascal and Connie Nelson are also in it. Connie's arc fits in terms of bringing things back up to speed. She's decent and her involvement is imperative in the continuation of what now could be an actual franchise. And as for Pedro's role, well, Brad Pitt once called playing Louis in Interview with the Vampire the bitch part because it was a dour, thankless role as compared to Tom Cruise's Lestat. Pedro's role made me think of that. Necessary? Yeah, but a bit of a bitch part in its thanklessness too. Also a bit of a shout out to the Brother Emperors played by Joseph Quinn and Fred Hetchinger. Joseph Quinn, we're gonna continue to hear big th things from. He was in a quiet place. He played a massive part in the season four of Stranger Things to which he sort of made his name. He was extremely well liked in that character. And he's going on to play Johnny Storm in Fantastic Four, First Steps. Now Fred Hessinger, I've not heard of before, but actually was the stronger of the two, to be fair. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he comes up with going forward. Overall, a decent film made significantly better by a single, in parts, conniving, pompous and effusive performance. We are all mere spectators in the greatest spectacle Rome and Gladiator 2 has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Denzel Washington. The film gets one, but Denzel's inclusion makes it two thumbs up from me. Yeah, sometimes when someone great is, is announced, they don't necessarily deliver said greatness just because, and you still respect the fact that they're in it. Denzel has pound for pound been gold to pretty much everything he's in. He's kind of like the Muhammad Ali or the Rafael Nadal of, of acting. He is the value, he is popcorn. He's just a brilliant actor and he brings the juice, you know, he, 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 he keeps films, he keeps films alive. He, he makes the difference, not just as a name, but in terms of the energy and the unpredictability and the sort of um, explosiveness that he brings. I don't know how many films Denzel Washington has left, but we should all, in the same way as a, a Michael Jordan or a Roger Federer or a Rafael Nadal, appreciate the great man whilst he's still making them, because um, nothing lasts forever, folks, as we know. Meskel, like I say, is good. He's interesting. Um, I think he has presence. It's funny with the DEI because one of the things that you could very rightly say is that you'll rarely if ever see actors outside of guys like Paul Meskel, white guys, getting a shot coming out of virtually nowhere, getting to work with a Denzel. When I think about Denzel, I don't think about Denzel working with a, a whole plethora of black young actors in 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 prominent roles. I do think of Ethan Hawke, I do think of Paul Meskel, I do think of Ryan Reynolds and that's not necessarily good you know I mean we want diversity and we want really good actors and those guys are really really good I'm not knocking them but the industry still is such that there aren't enough of everybody else to be given such a huge thing so early on to allow them the opportunity to have to work with the very best and to have a long career where they learn and grow and become themselves like Denzel legends. That's been it from me folks. What did you think? I'm sure you have a lot to say. What did you think? Was it hype? Is it hyperbole coming from me in terms of Denzel's performance? What did you think of Paul Meskel? A lot, a lot of women love Paul Meskel, you know. I was talking to someone about it, just mentioning I was going to see Gladiator 2 and the first thing they said was Paul Meskel. Uh, so clearly he has movie star status. 
he does remind me of a young Brando and he is apparently playing um, Stanley in A Streetcar Named Desire which seems like a perfect fit. Let's see what he does. Folks, that's been it from me. Leave your comments below. Tell me what you think. See you on the next one. Love, peace, Afro-Greece. Till next time. Boom.